Now, new figures show the UK population has risen at its sharpest rate in nearly 70 years. At the end of June last year, the Office for National Statistics calculated that 648,000 people lived in that sorry, six, 65 million 648,000 people lived in the UK. That would be a dramatic drop. Now, let's take a look at some of the figures. The number of people resident in the UK between June 2015 and June last year increased by 538,000. That's an increase of 0.8%. And if we look at the slightly longer term trends, we can see here an increase of around 0.8% has been relatively consistent since 2005. But if we go further back to the 1980s, we've seen negative population change as recently as 1982 and generally a much lower growth rate up until 2005. Now, if we look at the drivers behind that population growth, it is international migration that lies primarily behind the increase. It accounted for almost 350,000 more people in that period between 2015 and 2016, with an increase in births and fewer deaths also leading to the increase. Migration has overtaken births minus deaths in the past few years, but both causes of population change have had a net positive effect for some time. You have to go back as far as 1992 for the last instance of net migration actually reducing the overall population. Well, I'm joined now by Professor Christian Dustman, who's the uh, director for the Centre for Research and Analysis of Migration at UCL. So we've seen a, a population increase around the size of Bradford. Is this something that's going to continue, do you think? Well, we should uh, first point out that the migration figures and the population figures the ONS has come up with today uh, date back to 2015 to 2016. So these are pre-Brexit figures. Uh, ONS also has published in May this year migration figures on their own, uh, which go from June to December 2016. And there we see a drop in immigration from the Eurozone, from the European, uh, from, 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 from Europe, and an increase in emigration. So everything at the moment uh, suggests that net migration from Europe in particular uh, over the last year uh, will be probably uh, reduced quite uh, dramatically. So post-Brexit we're going to see a different set of figures? I, I would think everything I have seen so far suggests that migration is going down uh, from the European countries. Uh, that, of course, is uh, significant for British industry. Uh, we heard uh, some two weeks ago that uh, the nursing sector finds it very difficult to recruit nurses from uh, Europe, a 95% drop in applications. Uh, we have heard today that the agricultural sector is very concerned to find agricultural workers from Europe uh, for the harvest, and I think we will hear more of that. Now, the breakdown in population change around the UK also shows that, unsurprisingly, the pace of growth has come at different speeds in different places. England is the only country which actually exceeds the UK average. But if we look at the London average, uh, the population there has grown at a percentage more than double the rate of every other UK country. Now, this seems to feed into the idea of uh, the UK being dominated by big cities like London. Is that the case? Is that what we're seeing? Well, of course. I mean, the, the London economy is dominant in the UK and uh, immigrants go where the jobs are. Immigrants go where the economy is doing well. Uh, so it's not surprising that London is very attractive for people from other countries uh, who are looking for, uh, for, for, for work. And, uh, and, and that explains to a large part the very differential uh, inflow of immigrants into different parts of the UK. Is that something, again, we're going to see more of a shift with uh, in the next year's figures? Well, I think it all depends very much how the Brexit negotiations will be going. Uh, if, indeed, part of the financial sector uh, will go to other parts of Europe, uh, if, indeed, uh, companies will start to uh, allocate jobs to other European countries, then this means uh, that people will not come to London to the extent they have done before. But, on the other hand, uh, that would be very detrimental for the London economy, but also, of course, for the UK economy. So overall, these figures, we're talking about population increase, is that something that you were anticipating? 
Well, population has been uh, increasing, uh, well, the 2015-2016 figures on population changes uh, the UNS uh, published today are not something out of the ordinary, so this trend has been uh, such for quite a while. Um, well, you may want actually to, to think about this in a positive way. Many countries have the problem of uh, decreasing populations. Decreasing populations are generally far more difficult to deal with than increasing populations because a decreasing population means that you have less people uh, working for the old, for the retired, uh, for those who are not productive anymore, uh, that you have the challenges uh, to kind of get workers for industries uh, which are trying to expand, etc., etc. So an increasing population from the economic viewpoint, at least, is actually a good thing rather than a bad thing. Okay, Christian Dustman, thanks very much for joining us. Now let's take a look at the weather.